Sinjin, um, is a business in focus. You saw the numbers um, earlier um, last week and uh, uh, the revenue numbers and the bottom line numbers are flattish, single digits if you will. At least the bottom line number also uh, almost very flattish. And uh, the other aspect was the guidance that they've brought down slightly from mid-teens to lower double digits. Uh, Jonathan Hunt joins in to talk about that and a couple of comments that I read in the press release and about the quarter as well. Jonathan, good having you. Thanks so much for joining in. Um, um, I know we discussed uh, about two months ago that variations can happen in a quarter, in two quarters, in half years, but over a five-year period, the things look okay. But since we are talking at the end of the quarter, I want to understand what went into the quarter for the growth rate to taper off a little bit from the double digit uh, numbers that you've shown thus far in the half year and why this cut in guidance as well? Yeah, no, I, and I think that's fair actually at the quarter end is to sort of unpack some of the moving uh, parts in the quarter. Overall, I'd say though, the fundamentals have not changed. It's a good industry to be in. There's some real opportunities for the medium to long term. So the fundamentals are intact. Um, what we were working through, as are just about all of our peers in the industry in general, is uh, an impact that we're seeing in one segment of the industry, namely the U.S. biotech uh, segment. It slowed down quite a lot through the year. It actually hit us a little bit later than it hit many other people saw it in their numbers uh, earlier in the year. Ours has been very much in the second half of the year, and it reflects some of the macroeconomics we're all adjusting to. Interest rates have gone up globally over the last year or so. Uh, capital post the pandemic is moving in many different directions. And there's been a real slowdown in the new capital formation into those startup biotech uh, companies in the US. Now that's part of our business, it's not all of our business. So outside of that, if you look at big biotech, big pharma, they're not reliant on the capital markets for their funding. They're pretty self-sustaining. They deploy their own capital. That bit of our business and that bit of the market is going along pretty well, uh, and the fundamentals are very much intact. And you can see that in our numbers. That's where the growth has come from this quarter. The other thing I would say is this quarter is not really a surprise. It's very much in line with the expectations and the narrative that we had at the half year. We thought the third quarter would slow a bit coming through our research services business driven by those capital market uh, factors in U.S. biotech. And we thought that we would see in our development and manufacturing businesses and then customer segments like large pharma, animal health, and other regions of the world out of the U.S., Europe, and Asia, all of those would continue growing quite nicely. And that's pretty much what's happened. Adjustment on the guidance is just us looking out to the year end. A bit more of the softness. Uh, was in this quarter, and I think that just is going to slow the exit rate to the year. But it, it, it's a factor that I expect to work through, and it'll take maybe a couple of quarters, maybe three, and uh, we should be through it, and we'll be back to that good growth environment on the research side that matches the good growth environment we're seeing today on development and manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jonathan, uh, there, was a, there was a note which suggested that uh, your exposure to medium and small bio firms, uh, biopharma firms is generally about 15 to 20 percent and that may face the revenue growth pressures for a better part of 2024. Now, just trying to understand, I heard you say that these pressures, they are not all of your business which you highlighted, but I heard you say yeah. that this will probably last for a couple of quarters or three quarters. Do you expect for now, as things stand, there is pressure? it may change towards the latter half of the calendar. Is that your belief or assessment? Yeah, right I, I, that's pretty much, uh, pretty much the comment I just gave, yeah. Um, is it two quarters, is it three quarters? I'd also say it's not a firm specific issue. This is not a, a question for Sinjin. This is a question actually what's going on globally, globally. In, in the biotech sector and also for all of our peers. Very, very well discussed. Read across the market, read across the CEO, commentary in the US, Europe, Asia, in the research services and into the CDMO sector. We're all pretty much saying the same thing. There's a bit of a feed through from the rate of new capital formation in biotech. It's slowing bits of the industry. We're all coping with it. But the other parts, the big pharma, big biotech, and then in our case, also the animal health industry, pretty much unaffected and it's business as usual there with some good growth and some good growth opportunities. Hmm. 
just wondering because I mean, I mean, you know, another firm which has had a um, bit of a pushback on the animal health CDMO side as well. I heard you use that term twice. So you reckon that there is a bit of an uncertainty around that vertical uh, sure. individually as well, and could it last for longer? Is there any? Oh problem? no, no. Maybe, maybe I've mis, maybe I've misspoke or not being clear. Just the opposite. I'm saying, big pharma, big biotech, animal health it's are strong. all okay. going along. They're all going along very nicely and was making real progress in those segments. Uh, okay, because the same note that I uh, said, the other thing from also says that, could there be, could there be, and this is what I want to ask you, that could there be challenges for large pharma companies in the US in 2024 because there could be increased risk of additional measures on drug pricing in an election year? Is this something that happens? Any thoughts here, Jonathan? Oh, I, I, I think unlikely in, in an election year precisely because everybody's eye line's gonna shift to who wins the presidential election and then what comes in terms of their policies uh, beyond that. So I think you can kick that down the road a little bit. Um, so no, I, I, I'm not sensing any real concerns coming out of that. What happens after that, but calling the US election cycle uh, is not something I'm gonna try and do. Uh, yeah, yeah, completely understandable. Um, what, Jonathan, what happens in a period like this? I mean, does, uh, does, uh, do you still, because you would maintain some of the overheads costs, etc. do, because of the lower revenue numbers, do margins come under pressure or do you have the ability to kind of pull out some levers to ma manage operational metrics? Uh, always, I, I mean, I'm gonna be a little pedantic. Not lower revenue numbers, lower growth. Lower growth, yeah, yeah. sorry. Top line still grow, yeah, yeah, yeah. grow at 10%, 9%. Sure. There are many parts of the world and many parts of the global economy where 9% growth would consider ah. to be in a particularly strong performance. Now, as a firm, we're used to doing more than that. Yes. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's, it's still giving lots of opportunities. I think that's just day-to-day -day management. I, I wouldn't call that out. Looking after your cost base, finding efficiencies, we should be doing that every day anyway. Whether we're growing at 20%, 15% or 10, you still have to be very careful with shareholders' money and look for efficiencies. Okay, what, what, what stood out well, um, Jonathan? We've spoken about uh, the, the, the issue that, that is probably staying. What, what was the highlight, positive highlight for the quarter for you? A good operational delivery. I, th I think, come out and, and think from a strategic perspective and in fundamentals, uh, I, I was looking at it this morning. Uh, we, we, uh, we took the decision really about five years ago to sort of create this twin engine strategy, both research services, but also development manufacturing. Uh, we've doubled the size of our um, development manufacturing business through those five years. We're now at 40% of the overall uh, company's revenue comes from that CDMO sector when you put all elements of it together and it's experiencing pretty good growth. So that, that's a strategy going from ideation into implementation. Now we're ambitious to do more, that's why we invested in the quarter in the acquisition of the Stellis facility. That gives us headroom for growth over the next five years, you know, the next site strategic cycle, as it were. But uh, I'm pretty happy if I come out of the hurly burly, as it were, of a quarter and look at the overall shape of the business. Synjeans now are both a CRO research services business and a CDMO, and that CDMO is finding its place in the market and doing well. Mm. So, so you mentioned with regards to the Stellis facility that you expect it to be ready for operations in the second half of fiscal year 25. So arguably the last quarter of the calendar is when you might start to see some benefits out of that facility, safe to assume. Yeah, yeah the, 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 that's the plan. Open for business, we've got some client work already starting to queue up to go in there. Um, but that, that, that strategy, that um, facility, that's bought for a long term growth ambition. That's not about what we can do in the first quarter of operations. Yeah, of course. Uh, point well taken. Uh, <clears throat> just one more thing, because we're talking about growth here. Uh, you know, the last quarter, uh, and I know you mentioned that it, it, it is growth, it's just lower growth, but the last quarter of the previous year now also has Zoetis revenues embedded in it. So therefore the base effect being higher would also impact growth in quarter four. And, and it, could that be other reason why this slight lowering from mid-teens to lower double digits? 
Yeah, mathematically, you're correct. The, the year over year comparison on the quarter will be a little bit suppressed because of the strong growth in, in the year ago period driven by you know, one, uh, one business driver, the Zoetis contract. Sequentially, if you go third quarter to fourth quarter, we expect the, the usual sort of step up. Our fourth quarter is normally our biggest and busiest of the year. I expect in an absolute sense the fourth quarter to have higher revenue than the third quarter. And then if you look over the year over year, fourth quarter growth rates, of course, you've got that base effect to account for. Yeah, I think you've got the math spot on. Okay, yeah, I'm just, just trying to put two and two together. One final question, because I know I understand I have paucity of time to talk to you this time around, unlike the previous times, but uh, uh, you, you would have been asked about this Mangalore API ramp up. We spoke about it as well, and you were hopeful of things perking up sooner rather than later. What's the status there? Yeah, the, nothing's changed. Same strategic intent. Actually, to some extent, the comment I made earlier around progress we're making in the CDMO business, you know, move, doubling that over the five-year period, that's all wrapped up in that strategy. It's not a site-specific strategy. It's about the CDMO work we do in Bangalore, Mangalore, it's about small molecules and large molecules. And when you put those all, all together, I think we're making reasonable progress. Fair call. Okay, I understand I have to thank you uh, right now uh, because you have a busy schedule. But Jonathan, lovely talking to you. Uh, all the best for the quarters ahead and may this situation uh, become or turn favorable sooner rather than later. Thank you. All right, and viewers, thanks for tuning in.